Eldar, the, the name of this paper is Behaviorally Informed Financial Regulation. Can you tell us what behavioral economics is and what behaviorally informed means in this context? Well, you know, we, we look back at a lot of uh, recent and compelling behavioral research that proposes a slightly different way of thinking about human decision makers. And then we basically take important economic problems and try to impose a behavioral perspective and behaviorally informed means we do economics with a somewhat more sophisticated view of, of people. And what, what are the big learnings about behavior and intention and how people really react? Probably the biggest is that people are wise and clever but very context dependent. You switch nuances in the context and they make different decisions which leaves an enormous responsibility on the part of the policymakers to arrange contexts that help people make good choices. And Michael, can you explain one clear example of where this kind of behavioral context really has an impact in financial services? Uh, sure. One, one of the uh, central problems we face in the current crisis, among many, is that people really couldn't be able to understand in any meaningful way the kinds of mortgages that they were being offered. So one idea that we had is called a sticky opt-out home mortgage system. And the idea there is you get a simple, straightforward mortgage when you go to apply for one. Let's call it a 30-year fixed rate mortgage with straightforward terms. And that's the mortgage you'd get unless you needed later to opt out. And why is that different than what we've got now? Well, under the system we operated in for the last dozen years, uh, consumers were faced a, a bewildering array of options, more options they could possibly understand. And many of the product features were so complicated that the true costs of the loan were deeply hidden to them. They couldn't reasonably make a decision between taking out an option arm with an index to LIBOR plus nine uh, or uh, an alternative product with quite different features. Eldar, this sounds a little bit paternalistic to me. What do you, what do you think about that? It has that flavor. I and mean, I know if we take seriously the fact that people uh, could use some help in cases where context and complexity make things difficult, then yes, in that sense, we need to be a bit paternalistic in cases where things can help. We try very hard to leave some choices available to, to people to switch from mm -hmm. once we set the defaults, for example, in the right way, but there is a sense of paternalism and we think it's, I think it's somewhat justified. So primarily it's not prohibitions, but very strong uh, context to get people to choose the right thing. That's right, and again, it's not just people choosing the right thing, it's understanding the market context in which they're making the choices. So if industry participants are pushing them to make bad choices, we might need extra protections to help keep them anchored in a, in a choice that makes the most sense for them and is a reasonably understood one. And given that we clearly are going to be making some very major changes in our financial services regulatory system, how do you see your work playing into the, that discussion and, and uh, what kinds of changes do you think will be induced by the work that you've been doing? Well, we're, we're quite hopeful that these set of ideas, behaviorally informed financial services regulation, can have wide application in the mortgage system and the credit card system and elsewhere uh, in the financial services system, both at the level of statutory change and regulation. And we're going to be working hard with you over the coming years to try and make that happen. Well, thank you very much. It was a really uh, wonderful paper and just the beginning of a uh, long thank process. You. Thank you.